All right, we are recording. Don, what are we talking about tonight? Well, we're going to try to catch up on on uh, lost things and people's questions, and I see a lot of different things. The biggest thing I see is people that uh, they don't believe you can make splits this time of the year. I make a lot of splits this time of the year, and uh, <clears throat> people that's making splits that's got plastic foundation, uh, and they got a bunch of queen cells on there. I know I keep telling people it's hard to cut those cells. Uh, I was running through some old videos and I seen where somebody was making little, uh, this number eight hardware cloth. Actually, I made a few. Here's a little square one. And for the time it took me to make this, I made me a die and I punched out a whole bunch of them. And I have some plastic here that had queen cells on. And with this little die I got, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Basically, a hole in the wood, a piece of broomstick, and I put a piece of three-quarter, well, no, it's uh, about three inches by two and a half inches square of the hardware cloth, and I lay it on top of this thing here. And I put, put this little peg right at the top of it, and I hit it with a hammer. And you can see somehow nice and round it come out. I thought I'd bring that up because uh, I showed a couple students how to put these cages over queen cells on a piece of plastic foundation. And we had some that had 25, 30 cells. And it's kind of hard to cut cells off of plastic. So I made this little punch. Actually, I cut some square pieces of the hardware cloth and by the time you caught them, notch and fold them, try to get them. I thought I'd just make this thing here, and I punched out a whole bunch of them. You could put about 30 of these on a frame. And even if you don't get in there in time to catch the queen, that's like a cell protector. It keeps the other uh, bees or the queens from killing one another. It's a way you might save a half a dozen or 10 or whatever you need uh, if you've got plastic. But I know I hadn't been here for all summer, so I know people got a lot of questions. So let's get to those questions and get your answers, hopefully. Nobody's got their hands up, Don. Everybody <laughs> knows everything from the summer. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. We got Virgil and Thunder. Go ahead. No, oh, wait. You're still muted. Uh, try it on your end, guys. We there got you go. it. Yep, you're good. Yeah. Don, you say it's not too late. I know it's not too late to make splits down your way. What, what about ours? We're up well, in Ohio. The main thing is if you're going to make splits, have a small hole in the box, the entrance. The next thing is have either a mated queen or a good ripe queen cell. And a ripe queen cell is a, is a cell that's ready to hatch within 24, 48, the maximum hours. And then the next thing is to close the opening up and leave them closed up for a couple of days. Uh, I'm making most of my splits with actually no brood, a frame of honey, and I shake some bees in there and put a queen or a queen cell in there, and I make my splits. Um, another thing is people want to get into business. They keep talking about it, but they can't make that move. I've got students that uh, – they make money the first year and people that want to get in a business that want to work for yourself. You go to college and you spend a hundred thousand dollars and you go to work at McDonald's here, a 5,000 or a $10,000 investment puts you way down the road and you've got a business that's going. Now, George is a good example. He hasn't even been here a year. And I'll let George explain to you how much of his investment he got back in the first four or five months. And people worry about selling bees? Ask George. George, turn your mic on. Go ahead, George. Well, I can I can tell you this. I started I started off with twenty five packages on March the seventeenth. And here it is, what, five months later, I've made my money back four times and I've still got seventy hives left. And that's just following, you know, what Don said, own the stuff that I can remember. <laughs> well, you talk, are you just keeping them in nukes then and selling in the nukes? Or are you selling? Yeah, I'm, I'm just selling. 
I'm I'm just selling the nukes. I just put the package into a five frame nuke box, and I'm just selling I'm just selling the actual nukes. Yeah, well, we're up to thirty two now, Don. Um, and like I said, every it'd be nice to buy the packages. It's just with everything else we got going on, I couldn't afford it. But I, I mean, we started out. Would we end up with eight or thirteen hives that we overwintered? Mm -hmm. And from that, I'm up to the thirty two. But I've got them in eight and ten frame boxes now. As I moved them up into the nuke from the nukes, I, they've grown. Um, but my main concern was to get them built up so that we can get them through winter and then go from there next spring again to where we can, we sold one and I could have sold more, but I wanted to keep our stock so we can, you know, have enough to really go crazy next spring. The one thing I keep telling students here is you can make an investment by the bees, but the one thing that you can't buy, no matter if it's on sale, you can't buy time and time is going to get away from you right now. If you want to be in business next year, you need to be building now. And if you're going to buy 25 packages, you need to build about 100 to 125 five frame nukes. Uh, any of the students that's been here can tell you, I can throw a packaging, a nuke, turn around and get my money doubled in less than 10 days. So if you just follow 10% of what I'm trying to preach, and I'm giving you all the little building blocks to getting business, if you just open your mind and accept them, forget about making honey. You'll make more honey. The honey, you'll be saying, just like me, that sticky stuff is in the way. You can't make money with that honey. Well, I, I, I couldn't keep up. I mean, I, I wanted to keep going with the splits, but he's gone all summer and I'm back to work. And it was just getting, I didn't want to get it to the point where I was falling behind instead of moving ahead. And so I was putting them in the bigger boxes so I could keep up with them. But you were right. I mean, it's just amazing how fast those nukes build up. And oh, yeah. it, you know, it just seems like overnight they're just exploding and they seem to be strong, healthy hives. Um, so maybe if he can retire here, we'll ha I'll have extra help and we can really go all the way next next summer here, or spring, I'm hoping. Well, I'm pretty happy. Build. build anytime you got time. Build, build. Yeah. Every time I thought I was caught up with everything, I thought, well, that'll get me at least a couple days ahead. I turned around and opened one box and was like, oh no, I got I don't have enough. I got to get more. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. I just wonder how Greg's keeping up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll try it because I I opened up a hive there the other day that I I don't know. I had it. It was a nuke box. I had four high, and they were doing great. The, the week before when I had checked, and then I opened them up and they probably had 12 queen cells. I went, oh no. So when we got the other nuke boxes out and started splitting some more, but I was worried about it because it was so late in the year here. Didn't know if it was a good thing to do or not. Split, 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 that's all I can say. Well, that's what I did, so we're open. We'll see. Okay. All Greg, right. you want to chime in some on that? Go ahead, Greg. I think I'm, there we go. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just we followed what Don does. <clears throat> we were in the black uh, as far as uh, profitability uh, the minute we got home from the B run. Uh, so we were we were making money uh, as soon as we got home, and then with all the queen cells and nukes, I mean. It sounds ridiculous and it sounds complicated, but once you learn those couple tricks from Don and how to grow bees, uh, you absolutely can. I, I can't keep up. And I've got seven kids and a, a good wife and slave labor and the whole nine yards. Uh, and we can't, we can't build. There's, I mean, just we're, we, we've grown so quick, uh, even in the first year to where, you know, we were real big on building boxes and I still love doing that, but I'm, I've taken quite a few pages from Don's book. Um, this winter, after I get this next hundred uh, boxes built, I'm just going to have to buy pallets of them um, and, and put them together because I'm spending so much time uh, building equipment. Uh, there's just not quite enough time in the day to do all the things that you want to do. Uh, that's a really good problem to have when, when, the, the, when the weak point of your business enterprise is the infrastructure more so than the actual uh, components of business itself. The bees, they grow. You learn how to do that uh, and it kind of, you're, they're, there are very few limitations and mostly like Don says, uh, 
it's wouldn't, couldn't, can't. Once you uh, start to figure that out uh, and get ahead of the game, uh, it, it it's just right now for us, it's one of the things where it, it, it's grown so quick that we can't keep up uh, with all the things going on here around the farm. Uh, the bees, I they're on, they're on cruise control, uh, which means I'm losing money at the moment because they're just, they're in the yard, they're coming, they're going. Uh, there's way more bees, uh, than I've got time to fool with right now. I'll get caught back up, uh, and we'll, and we'll, we're we're already in the black for next year. Um, so there's very few enterprises, uh, especially on a farm that you can start year one, uh, and be in the black, which is pretty incredible to think about. So what Don says, it works. It just, you know, you can't buy time, like he says. So you try to find little tricks uh, to cut into that to try to save you some more than you can. One thing I keep telling students when they come here, and most people don't believe a word I tell them when I tell them, a lazy beekeeper can make a thousand to two thousand dollars a week. That is just pure laziness. And to some people, they jump back and that's a lot of money. George was here and he watched. In fact, George at his house. It made $1,000 in just two days. So if you just listen to the steps that I'm trying to preach, and I'm giving them all this information free of charge. Every two weeks you come here and you can ask questions. I'm holding your hand in this business. Who else is doing it? Nobody. Okay. And I know we got questions now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> back to George. Go ahead, George. Just build boxes, build boxes, build boxes, man. It, it never ends. It's not hard work. It just don't, it just will never end. And I can promise you they'll fill up boxes faster than you can build them. That is a fact. <clears throat> is that all you wanted to add, George? Just build, build, oh. build, build. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Down to Robbie. Go ahead, Robbie. Hello, you guys. How are you? Okay. Don, did you get the card I mailed out to you yet? Yeah, th thanks for that card. That cheered me up. <laughs> uh, show, me, show, the, show everybody the card. Monique, where's that card at? Wow. The card that Robbie sent me, it's over there uh, by my chair. Could you bring it over, please? I found it on this one Friday. I looked at it. I was like, yeah. hey, that looks pretty nice. I wasn't really sure what it was until I opened it. That's it. Hmm. That's cute. Cheered me up. <laughs> the nice embossed little V card. Thank you. You're very welcome. I do have a, I do have a couple questions. Uh, one question is, my bees are getting ready for the winter. I started that three weeks ago. Um, I have food. And I'm getting honey on two frames. And the third frame is starting to have, starting to have um, honey on the top. Um, I'm, my goal is to pull one frame of honey, and if I do, my golden rod bloomed early this year. I'm not sure why that is. It usually blooms after Labor Day for my area, but it bloomed a couple weeks before that. I wouldn't try pulling any honey off until they get, if you've got a second box on there or a super, you might pull some out of that. But the frames that I seen that you had posted, I wouldn't pull any out of them. No? Okay, I'm, okay, I'm feeding them now, and I'm going to buy uh, probably about 40 pounds of sugar pretty soon. You need to do your mite treatments. Alrighty. Do you know why Golden White bloomed already this year? 
No, I I don't know how the the weather's working this year. <laughs> yeah. All right, I do have nice vent hole, um, three eighths and an inch vent hole this year. I'm using an inch and an eighth underneath the handhold, and on my brood box, I put a hole in the front of the box and one in the back, plus their entrance reducer. Now, wow. I mean, I don't, I don't think you can put too much ventilation in. When I run bees up in Ohio, one yard, I forgot to go out and put entrance reducers in. And at, at that time, I was running 10-frame equipment. They actually propolized the hole shut from one side of the side of the box to the other, and only the center, about three inches, was open. Now, that's a three-quarter hole, 16 inches wide. Now, the bees know what they need, and if you have holes in the box under the handhole with screen of the number eight hardware cloth on, if there's too much ventilation, they'll propolize it shut. Then springtime, just take a, a wire brush and hit it a little bit, and you can open them holes up. But I would rather have too much ventilation than not enough because moisture in that hive is going to kill them a lot faster than anything else. Does that answer your question? It does. I was like, should I pull honey? And if so, how much? I, I don't want to um, – I don't want to take the food away from them. You know what I mean? Well, if you got extra honey in there, you can pull the honey and always feed sugar back. Okay, if I do pull honey, can I put it, can I feed it back to them now? Well, you can feed it back at any time, but if you're going to feed honey back, don't dilute it. If you dilute honey with water, it'll cause it to ferment. Mm. And there it gets sick, huh? Well, they get the diarrhea, and then that goes downhill from there. Mm. I see. Now, I pull a lot of honey. We pulled honey from a lot of our yards. We pull a lot, two and three frames of sealed honey out of the brood chamber and put new foundation back just to give the queen a place to lay. Because if you don't get those bees building workers now, that's your spring workforce. So they can actually store more honey in that brood chamber and then you don't have a workforce going in the spring and you have to treat right i, I still have brood I, I still have i still have brood now not as much as i did a couple of weeks ago that's normal okay because all bees right now are starting to slow down. And depending on the race of the bee you got, some of the queens are geared more by the amount of pollen coming in. And if you got a, uh, like a Russian or a Carniolan, and there's not a lot of pollen coming in, and you're not feeding pollen substitute, the queen will actually slow down. When you start hitting temperatures 90 and above, they're going to slow down. We just now got out of 90s a couple of days ago. When the, 70s, when the temperature gets up at 85 and below 85, it's a little cooler in the evenings, you'll see a pattern starting to expand out. As long as you see eggs in there and brood, your queen's okay. Don't get in there and worry about it. How did it handle that on Doy on Doy and Hurricane? Uh, we just got a little wind. We didn't get no rain at all. Hmm. But I haven't been in my southern yard. Stephen's down there right now, so he might have had a few hive blew over. We're not that far from the coast on some of our yards. All right. Okay, will that cover it, Robbie? Okay, good. Over to Paul. Go ahead, what arm, Paul? How you doing, Don? Okay, uh, you look like the hunting man. I see you got a good display there. Yeah, I actually did pretty good today. But um, getting back to talking about doing splits now up in the north, I mean, obviously you would need <coughs> native queens. But what about um, what about the brood cycles? I mean, you want, like you were saying, you want some um, young bees in there to overwinter with. So how many brood cycles do you think you would still get out of them this time of year? Well, 
if I knew what the weather was going to be, I'd be a weatherman. But where you're at, you should probably get at least two to three cycles. You might get some cycles up into December because I can remember in January having brood. The queen's just going to make smaller patterns. But she's going to stay laying. Because I got some pretty big hives, and I don't want to. I don't want these hives going through the winter. Because if I take, if I pull some supers off now, I'm going to be packing a hell of a lot of bees into a few boxes, and I don't want to do that again. Well, my my thing is numbers. You know, you might have one with five boxes on. I personally would take that hive, and I'd make twenty to twenty five splits. So if I lost half of them, I'm at least twelve ahead. You know. Yeah. The taller the box is, I learned that a long time ago, double deep tens in Ohio or up where you're at is going to consume more honey than if you was to put them in two five frames and with no uh, supers on, with a high top feeder. And just, yeah. you know, if you need to add feed to them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did away with the double deeps this year. It was just yeah. um, after I saw that mess I had last year, forget about it. Or in the spring, rather. I mean, it's it's... It's, it's twice as much to manage on top of everything else. So, Well, the thing is, too, that the taller the hive, the stronger the hive is. You've got a lot of bees. You're always on that borderline of swarming all the time. And if you're not consistently in them every you know, 12 to 14 days, you're going to get swarm cells in there. And then you're going to end up losing bees that you could be making money with. Yeah, I'd yeah. pull the honey and get you some queens. And make some splits. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that, yeah. So I had a swarm last week, even, and I, I was... <laughs> the bees are telling you something. Yeah. Remember, yeah. remember the basics that I keep preaching? The two things that the bees do, multiply and store honey. That's <laughs> what they do. Yeah. Well, I tell you, this was one year, one hell of a, a honey crop this year, I'll tell you that. So at least... Um, at least I'm getting to know a good year from a bad year also. <laughs> well, that's good. All right, thanks. That's all I have right now. Okay, up to Patricia. Go ahead, Pat. Hi, everybody. Um, well, there's an old wives' tale that when the goldenrod blooms early, it means it's going to be an early winter. It didn't bloom early here, so I'm hoping we stay warm a lot longer. But um, we just finished pulling our cotton honey, and uh, the harvest was pretty good. We sold out of bees for the year, but I was, um, my brother is about 40 minutes from Don in Georgia, and we had to do an emergency run down there to see him, and so on the way home, I stopped in and uh, visited Don, and it was a drop-in, here we are, surprise, and he was very gracious. Uh, he sold me some bees. Uh, him and Leon shook bees out, and Leon was in shorts and flip-flops. And I know y'all all know, I wear a full bee suit and gloves and boots and everything here in my bee yards. And when I got to Don's house, he goes, my bees won't sting you, don't worry about it. And so I was like, okay, I took a deep breath and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna trust you. I'd never got stung. Leon shook bees in shorts and flip flops, never got stung. He got stung at the end because he stepped on one and it stung him <laughs> as a thank you. Um, <laughs> But my point is that in we were there about three hours, and just in a friendly stop by visit, I learned so much. So if any of you get an opportunity to go spend a couple of days with Don, it's worth every penny you pay. You will definitely get your money's worth. But it is in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia is spread out all over the place, and so you drive along on these little country roads forever and all of a sudden there's a house <laughs> and he had bees in the yard. So we figured it must be him. Um, but it was a really fun visit, learned a lot just in a couple of hours of walking around the bee yard talking bees and uh, you know, what you do for this and how you do that. So y'all you know, make time and go see Don. It's worth every penny. Okay. That's it. All right. Over to Jason and Linda, go ahead. We've been having a little bit of uh, trouble over the last three weeks with quite a bit of uh, hive beetles and wax moths both. Uh, we uh, have put the uh, diatomaceous earth with the Crisco and painted the bottoms and all of that. 
tons of high beetles. We put dicin or uh, uh, Crisco and uh, boric acid, tons of high beetles. We put in the beetle blaster traps and tons of high beetles. Uh, Are you feeding we've been pollen fighting. substitute? What's that? You feed pollen substitute? Well, we weren't uh, until about a week ago. Uh, and, you set a buffet up for them. What's that? You set a buffet for the high beetles. I stopped feeding. Uh, if you're going to feed uh, pollen substitute, the best thing to do is just put it in a bucket and hang it out of a tree. Don't yeah. put it in a hive. And that we didn't put it in the hives. We put it out open feed uh, yeah. for them. So they, it wasn't in the hives at all, ever. Uh, yeah. And uh, as far as the wax moths, uh, we, we live on quite a bit of acreage. And when I was driving down there one evening, I mean, literally there's tens of thousands of moths that are uh, in, in our grass formations for the cattle to graze and everything. And that's within probably about 500 yards of the bee yard. And so uh, anyway, we, we put up a, uh, an insect light and that has helped. Uh, every single morning when we go out to the bee yard, it's completely full of hive mo or, or, uh, wax moth bee, or, uh, wax moths in the, in the deal. So I think we've got that kind of under control. But I guess my question, Don, and I think you answered it a little bit, um, our queens are not laying up hardly at all. It's been between uh, 90 and 102 degrees for two months straight. And we also are, are sitting at 85% humidity. Now here's, here, I mean, we're, we, are, we are in a panic mode as to whether we're really going to be prepared to overwinter any bees here because our populations are so far down. We have literally gone from 93 hives four weeks ago to 51 hives today. Are you pulling honey out of the brood chamber? Is the brood chamber full of honey? No, we pulled all the honey out three weeks ago and put in brand new wax foundation and prep based on one of the videos. Okay, you don't want to put too much new foundation per hive. One we, to that, two sheets. We, that's what we did. We, yeah. put, we went from five, five frames in the five frame nooks down to four frames in the four frame nooks and put the two brand new foundations where the queen was. Yeah, okay. But, they're just not there. And also we're, we're supplementally feeding them a four to one ratio uh, and, and basically 50 gallons a week. And uh, that's about the consumption. They have stopped eating that because we do have goldenrod yeah. and we have goldenrod pollen and we have quite a bit of it actually within, you know, probably a hundred yards of the bee yard. Once you see that goldenrod pollen coming in, you should see a big increase in the, the population. You know, they'll start raising more bees. Good, good. Because, there's, I mean, there's a lot of orange pollen on their legs from the right. goldenrod. Once they get a little bit of that stored up, I mean, main thing is get your entrances reduced down a little bit. Good. And keep an eye on them. But as long as you don't have wax moth larvas inside the hive, that says your hive had swarmed on you. Okay, okay. Well, we're, we're diligent now. We're, we're looking at hives every single day, going through all of them. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll be very aware of any wax larva whatsoever. And, uh, but I mean, it's just shocking the amount of change that's happened over the last three weeks. And of course we have torrential down, downpours we had 100 mile an hour winds. I mean, it's crazy stuff around here. Uh, you should notice uh, October 1st to the 15th, you should have a big increase in the population in, in the brood cycle picking up. Okay. All cleans, no matter what race you got, they slow down when it's too hot. Right, right. One of the things we were wondering now, uh, if we have an explosive increase in populations, we don't have any queen cells being developed either in the boxes that are left. If you don't have queen cells that they're developing now because of a crowded box, because there's not enough pollen coming in. Right. That's what if I wonder. You a, if you had a frame of pollen from another hive and designate one hive to make cells, add it to that, or make a pollen patty. 
and don't make none anything any bigger than about four inches in diameter, you know, and about a half inch thick. You want them to consume it in two days, because if it's longer than that, you're going to get a lot of beetles. Okay. What if I have uh, better bee uh, patties? Can I cut a four by four out of that and put it on a, a queenless hive? You mean a pre-made patty? Yeah, the pre-made yeah. stuff. There's a lot of people that buy pre-made patties. Uh, I personally would mix my own up because I like to know what is in the patty. I don't like people putting real pollen in there that's been irradiated uh, to kill germs because you don't know what's going back in your beehive. Okay, okay. But as long as you see pollen coming in, you're in good shape. I mean, the hive will self-regulate. Okay. Okay. Well, that was our main concern because we, we just seen a, a, such a tremendous change over a very short period of time, and it was scary. I mean, just scary to us. Well, uh, when you start looking at four and 5,000 hives, then you see a difference, then that'll scare you, you know. Right now, it's a learning curve. First year, the first one to three years is a good learning curve. After that, you start getting an idea of what's going to happen at certain times of the year. Okay. That sounds real good. Thank you for the info. And by the way, thanks again for bringing the chat back. This is this is a treasure for all of us. And <laughs> I really appreciate that. Well, I took a little vacation, but uh, I get a lot of emails. People want to hear the, the chats again. But I'm here to answer questions, and everybody sits there like, you know, their speakers broke. <laughs> I can't help you if you don't ask a question. That's, that's why we need to have these chats. Well, sure. Thank you again. Okay. Okay. Down to Linda Webster. Go ahead, Linda. Go ahead, Linda. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, we hear you. Okay. My question is, my bees are doing well this year. I actually had to start over. I have five nukes that I started with this summer because I lost everything, and they're doing well, but they're they're full of bees each each hive is full of bees and they've got nectar in the frames and honey but they're not capping anything and i don't know why here where we are seven. pardon me whereabouts do you live uh missouri lake of the ozarks right in the center of the state okay well probably where you're at there's probably so much moisture that this year here with all the moisture in the air they're not capping honey like they used to do uh-huh no, you get so a dry what, spell, they should start capping it. They should? They're, they're just late, you think? Well, if there's moisture in the air and the, the honey, and especially if you're feeding too, I mean, it got I'm a lot not of feeding. I'm not, not feeding at all. Okay. Well, you might be in an area where there's, uh, I noticed this year, all the honey is a lot more uh, thinner or loose, not as mm -hmm. thick as it normally is. So it's one of those years where everything is, is more watered down. Okay, so just wait on them, give them time. Just wait on them. If they got half of a frame that's capped and you need some honey, I did some videos and I show you how to check it without a refractometer. You can just turn the frame sideways and give it a little shake on the lid. Right. Right. If okay. nothing comes out and you know you don't have no droplets on it, then it's good to extract. Okay, okay. And the other thing I wanted to know, you always talk about going down to one deep in the winter because of less real estate for the bees to take care of. I'm running two deeps right now and have forever. How, how do you do that? Do you just pull it off as the bee population goes down? The bee population shouldn't go down unless you have a pesticide or a mite problems. Okay. But what I'm doing right now is I'm taking all my eight frame stuff and I'm making two and three splits out of it. So I'm basically going to run either mediums or I'm running deeps as nukes. Now, if I run mediums through the winter, I'm running two mediums. If I run okay. deeps and they're real strong, I run one deep and one medium on it, and that's the way I leave them all winter. Okay, so you put a medium on top. Okay. Right, yeah. Okay. All right. As I've always ran two deeps, and it seems like over the years I've had problems with that through the winter here. Are you running 10 frame stuff or are you running eights or fives? 10. 10? Uh huh. You you're going to do all this here you need to switch over to either eights or go fives now okay. i run nothing but tens many years ago and i found out by going to eights they actually build up better and then i found that if you put them in five frame boxes 
they actually overwinter with less honey to consume and in better shape. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay. Over George. Go ahead, George. Hey, Don, when, when you when you make those little queen cages with that broom handle, uh -huh. and you put that and you put that over a cell. Do you, do you have any the workers with the in, inside of that cage as well, or just just the cell itself? Well, what I do is I take the the wire cage like this, and I take and stick it against the uh, frame where the queen cell is, and I just rotate it back and forth like that, and shove it in as tight as you can. Now, you're going to have to pull out one frame. Now, if you're running five frame, you're going to be running two frames or three frames in there. Because you can't run five frames with this in. It's too wide. The frames, will, when you pull them up, they'll pull them out. You need plenty of room for clearance. So you can pull that out, and you can probably see five or six queens already that hatched out in those. And then all you have to do is take that screen off and let them climb up into the palm of your hand, walk over to one of your hives that don't have a queen in it, and just let them walk on in. <coughs> if you do it within the first 24 hours, there's no worry about them rejecting, especially if the hive is a split and it's queenless, because the virgin queen don't have any smell door. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm running, I went and changed all my nukes. I'm, I'm running nothing but three and four frames. So. Right. Mm -hmm. I got I got plenty of room to, to use them. Mm -hmm. It's a lot e it's a lot easier to work three four frames than it is to work a five frame. Right, that's what I try to show here. A five frame box only gets five frames when it's ready to be sold. It runs two or three frames, and that way you're shaving four to six seconds off each hive inspecting it because you don't have to set that first frame out and check for a queen. You just look down, slide it to the side, and you move on. I'll tell you what, that sure has made my inspections a lot okay. easier. Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. I had all five frames in mind, you know what I mean, in the beginning, and then it's after I walked in, it was killing us, man. It was killing us trying to go through live inspections with five frames in each one. Yeah. Each time you come, you're going to pick up seconds off of each hive. Because when you start running 30 to 40 hives every hour, you've got to be efficient. You can't take 40 minutes per hive and make a living at it. You know, that's what I try to tell students. You know, what do you need to look for a queen? Why do you want to find a queen? Look in, get going. Look for cells. The only time you need to find a queen is if you got someone standing there with some money in their hand and going to sell it to them. Exactly. I mean, the only the only thing I'm looking for is, is queen cells and hive beetles. Right. You know what I mean? If I don't see either one of them, I'll move on to the next one. Probably. It's just like I'm running under shade trees. And can you see the difference working under that pine thicket? Jeez. Yes. It's amazing. And then it's most cool. people say, you know, you're working under that pine thicket, you're going to be ate up with beetles. How many beetles we have? No, I, I didn't see none. You might find one or two in each hive. I mean, that's they blow in. They they're drifting all the time. People moving bees around. It's so peaceful at your house that I've turned around and planted trees to get mine like yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, every all time right. you come, I'll teach you more. I'm I'm gonna try to come down in the next couple of weeks. Michelle's got a couple more days off, so we will come back down probably like okay. the middle of September. Pretty soon you'll know more than me. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. You forgot more than you've taught us. <laughs> All right, that's it. Okay. Over to Steve. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, you're still muted. You got to do it on your own. There you go. Yeah, found a piece of land up in Delonica. It's got about an acre. I think that's about good, but it, uh, the backyard is wooded in it. Probably about a football field west in the woods. You gonna set you some beehives up there? Yeah, and I yeah, I wanted to, I haven't bought it yet, but we're still looking, but I wanna know what's a good procedure for uh, Oh yeah, I mean in Delonica, one side of Delonica makes a lot of sour wood and the other side don't. Uh, Depends on what side you're on. It's gonna be on the east side. There's a yeah. Yeah. The east side's got a lot of sour wood. Well, that's what they claim up there. I'm, you know, I've had bees up on uh, alternate 75. I've had them on 115, but the bears is a little rough up there. Uh, what in Delonica? Yeah. 
<laughs> they like honey. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what I should do is build those uh, towers. Huh? Well, there's a guy in Blairsville. He's one of my old students, and he built a ladder, and it's on a two-inch pipe, and it's up eight foot high. He said it takes a while to work his hives, but he greases the poles, and he said the bears can't climb them. So I think it's full of bears. It, well, I don't know about full, but there's bears. There's, there's bears down around my house, but it's lucky, you know, they ain't been here. Yeah. I hear I, I, uh, I just uh, had a documentary about, about bears, and they, they can smell for miles. It's funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you get ready, I'll say you some good, gentle bees. Well, I got two of your noobs, and they, I've already got six hives. It's uh, quite All right, that thing's multiplied too quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm freaking out every time I walk up there. I get hit with cheap by the way. Uh, this, the hives are very, very strong. They're hanging outside. And... Time to do some splitting. Yeah. I, uh, but I got to move them, so I'm probably going to be moving them in the morning. My, my, my concern now is treating for mites. You haven't been treating? No, nope, I haven't been treating. I got Apicar. I'm about ready to put my hives this weekend. Well, you need to start doing some treatment. Keep those mites down. Get on the suit and go out there. They're double stacked, uh, eight frame. Are they heavy right now? Yeah, they're very heavy. I'll get in there and pull pull three or four frames of honey out of that second box and put some empty frames in there. Give them a place to work. There's earth swarming around here right now. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're out and about doing figure eights and all that too. So yeah. a lot of I think orientation. Yeah, they might be looking for a place to leave. I should set up a couple of five frame nukes out there. I would get you some swarm boxes. Ain't gonna hurt. Yeah, I got I got about uh, four, four uh, five frame nukes. Mm -hmm. Just put them out in front, huh? Well, I just set them anywhere. I've had them sitting on the sidewalk, and I've had swarms come in them. Okay, I'll do that this weekend. There's one out there, and it was the uh, the mountain sweet honey package I bought. Uh huh. It was with nothing, so I put a frame of uh, eggs and uh, and uh, larva in there, and they seem to get be getting strong, and then all of a sudden they start dwindling out. I don't see many around the entrance. Right now. Uh, I was going to throw that one away, and thought I'd try to revive it. Sometimes you can do that, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it don't. So as far as moving the hives, that's my big problem. Uh, I got to go out there, what, midnight? I know it's at midnight. They're still out there. Well, you're not going to move all the bees at any one time. I would go out there an hour after dark, put a screen over them, and then move them the first thing in the morning. I mean, you're going to lose some bees. All the bees don't come back to the hive every night. You might have a handful or two hands full that are out in the woods somewhere. They'll come back to that location at first thing in the morning. Now how do you, 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 I guess you make the screen for the front? Yeah, you want to screen the opening in the front and make sure you staple your boxes or put ratchet straps on where they don't move. Yeah. They got screen, uh, they got screen bottoms. I made a mistake by it. You still got to put an entrance, you know, close the entrances up. So I, should I just use the uh, the wood to close it up? I would put screen on them. Screen. So they, yeah. And then I got a city van. You see in the city van, I gave one. Yeah. Uh, I should put them in the city van, or should I set it up for towing and just buy a trailer? I'd put them in the van. I mean, that's why you want to close them up. Yeah. They're not going to get out. Make sure the ratchet strap's on. Yeah, they got air conditioning, too. Yeah. Yeah, so don't even worry. Just smoke them and just close the front entrance up. You don't have to smoke them. Just go out there after dark and take you a – you've got eight-frame stuff? Yeah, it's all eight-frame. If it's eight-frame, you cut your uh, screen 12 and a quarter uh, inches long, 
by about four inches and just take that piece and fold it over the edge of your hive and then lay it up because it'll be at a 90 degree L. Just put it in the entrance and take a T50 staple gun and put about three staples across the bottom and a couple in the box and you're good to go. But uh, should I get split them ready and just like make walkaway splits? And, uh... No, I wouldn't do walkaway splits now because, you know, if you don't have a mated queen, you move those bees and you don't know if there's any drones in the area and you don't get mated, queen don't come back. A lot of dragonflies out here now. Yeah, I seen when I was out there uh, looking at the hive and I seen a couple of dragonflies. Yeah, they, they get the queens. They, they landed on the box and they were looking at me. <laughs> well, you're a little too big for them to fly off with. <laughs> I, I, I smoked the hell out of them when they dropped dead. <laughs> yeah. They got, they got the blast of the uh, inferno. Okay, I got it. Okay. Tie them up and just put them in the van. Yep, put them in the van, move them. Okay, over to Dennis. Go ahead, Dennis. Can you hear me? Yep. Hey, yeah, we hear you. Uh, I wanted to thank you, Don, for you sent somebody my way the other day. What a queen from Missouri. Oh, yeah, I sent, that's one thing I try to do is I try to send customers to all my students. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, you mentioned one time where you got your nuke boxes. I'm about like uh, Greg. I'm going to have to order some. I'm, I went, I made 400 boxes last winter. It's gone. I'm shifting <laughs> some things into eight framed boxes. And um, I'd have to bite the bullet and buy a pallet or something, slow this mess down. <laughs> you get a hold of Antler Ridge. You know, he had the cheapest price and their box joints. Now, if you prefer the rabbit joints, tell them. You know, we bought a pallet. There was a thousand boxes on it, and then when I reordered, I when I talked to him, I told him I wanted mine all rabbit rather than box joint. Okay. And also, mm -hmm. my golden rod is about done, and some of my hives are kicking the drones, and some of the hives are propolizing the entrance. Mm -hmm. With that said, I'd love to split some more, but <laughs> last time I did that, um, I lost a bunch of them. They just, well, now, winter might have been 30 days earlier, I think, going to be this year for me. If you would have closed the entrances up, you'd probably done better. You probably didn't close the entrances up when you made your splits. Well, I want to put bread queens in. That, that's your best uh, bit right now. But um, you think, you suppose I can still, you know, I'm still leery about just getting them through a single five frame <laughs> nuke. <laughs> it's like riding a bicycle. I can show you how to ride a bicycle until you fall off that bicycle. You've got to know how to balance. So if you put a mated queen in there, you know your area, you know the weather. Uh, you can feed. I mean, once you put a mated queen in there and you feed them, they're going to multiply. Yeah, I know how to feed. Yeah. I'm Walmart's best customer right now. Uh, I left for 10 days on vacation, come back, and it was almost dry. I come very close to losing something. We're in a dearth here. And I don't know how many hundred pounds I put out in the last week, <laughs> but we're catching them up. Uh, for Jason and Linda, I lost 70, 75 nukes two years ago to high beetles. And... I was putting drawn comb in instead of foundation. You're probably putting foundation in. Um, write me or text me later, and I'll tell you what. I bought some beetle um, barns. I got something I put in them, and I and I also I put uh, that. I have a greenhouse here, and I had 300 foot of a 20 year carpet I put underneath all my hives, and that's almost eliminated all my uh, uh, beetles. It's cost you a little up front boy I, I haven't lost but one hive to beetles and i think they absconded they were out in the heat and the beetles took over afterwards that's pretty good for this year on it so just a suggestion and i was putting in drawn comb faster than the bees were multiplying on them and i cost myself too so but yeah i learned the hard way <laughs> but i appreciate it don i'll hopefully get down there in spring this year and stay but long you don't enough to learn. To buy no carpet now, you know. I learned that, you know, they used to talk about putting carpet. We oh, had our 
it changed and uh, they was going to charge the haul away and I just cut it up into three foot runners and I got it through my bee yard out there. And I don't seem to have a big beetle problem. That Maybe that's part of it. I mean, you know. But if you go around anybody who does carpet installing, they will give you all the carpet you want. Yeah, I said carpet. What I meant was that it's a ground cover for the greenhouse. It's a kind Grand of a plastic. Material. It's, yeah. yeah, it's a little heavier. Yeah. And boy, it, it, it helps, I guess, when the larva hits it, it kills them. Mm -hmm. But um, I appreciate it. Maybe this coming spring, uh, when do you need to start taking orders? I usually start taking them towards the end of the year. I want to start pushing it earlier this year so I can. Now, if you're going to get nukes or anything, let me know early because Stephen's already pretty much sold out, I think, for next year. Because I was talking to him the other day, and he said he's got about all he can handle. Yeah, I will be. it'll be packages for some customers and, and stuff like that. I've, yeah. I've got <laughs> – I got more nukes than I know what to do with, but it's been a good year. I mean, I try to stay out of business because I want to increase yeah. and uh, they're still Once calling. You start selling, they, they just keep coming. Yeah. I've got two thirds of the customers bought this year has already got lined up for next year. So if that does that another yeah. year, uh, I'll be in good shape, but I appreciate it. Okay. Hey, over to Paul. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, Don, talking about swarms again. I, I have this one tree, the bees, they always swarm on the same branch. For what reason? I don't know. How long does the scent from a queen stay on a, on a branch? I would say two to three days. I got a tree back there. I finally cut it down back by my bee lab. I got a picture of about nine big swarms at one time, and they was all the size of a basketball hanging in that one old pine tree. Yeah, I'm you know, hanging a box. I'm hanging a box there now. I had new boxes. I had swarm boxes all over the place, and they they don't they don't go in them for some reason. Well, what are you putting in them? I just have some frames in there. They're not even drawn out though. It's just foundation. Well, just regular foundation undrawed. Yeah. Did you put a drop of lemongrass oil in there? Yeah, but I never freshened them up. Well, you shouldn't have to do it, but once every two or three weeks. Yeah. If they need yeah. a house, they'll find it. Yeah. I mean, do they send out scouts before they swarm? Oh, yeah. They... yeah. Sure yeah. do. Yeah. And some people tell me that um, you should be hanging your swarm boxes out in the middle of February because they'll, they'll send scouts out first thing in the spring. I've seen swarms in January, but it's not common. I've got uh, five or six large pieces of comb about 40-some feet up in a pine tree right now. The bees was in that top of that tree for three weeks, and they got a lot of comb up there, and they finally they up and left. Yeah. You know, they got a mind of their own. Yeah, that they do. All right, thanks, Tom. Okay. Okay, Paula, go ahead. Hey, Don, how are you? So I've been threatening that I was going to move down to Georgia, so I finally bought some property down there. Um, <laughs> so I guess what I'm looking for is some advice. I, ha I, bought six, I'm, I bought some property down in Winston, which is near Douglasville, over towards Alabama, mm -hmm. and it's all wooded. So I'm just wondering, I guess, two questions. First of all, how much of the forest do I need to clear for my hives? Let's say I'm going to have 50 to 60 hives, or do I just leave it wooded? And then going back to uh, the idea of like putting some type of foundation on there to keep the hive beetles down. I mean, I could, I could cement the whole area if I wanted to. Well, if you're going to go out there and work, is it mostly hardwoods or is it pine trees? It's a combination. There's pine trees and there's hardwoods. Um, there's, uh, and there's a nice creek on the property, so they got water, but it's a combination. I think what I would do is I'd build your stands and I'd buy a pole saw, unless you have one. I would trim a lot of your low-hanging branches up at least 10, 12 foot. That way you don't have to worry about ticks falling on you. You've got a good canopy. You've got airflow. You've got places for the bees to fly through. Yeah, my canopy is about 8 foot to 12 foot in places, and... Uh, I have some open areas, and I have a lot of it's pretty thick, and I'm having a good return on queens. Uh, they might have to fly an obstacle through there, but I think they have a better chance of surviving than out in the open. 
Okay. I know we have uh, mating yards that have no trees at all, and sometimes our yards just aren't getting returns. Yeah, and and you know I have pretty high canopy where I'm at. Um, you know maybe I'll I'll pay some consulting fee to you to have to come down and look at it um, and give me some advice. I have a pretty high canopy. It's you know it's pretty up there. Those trees are about a hundred feet high, so the canopy is pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm just wondering, you know, up here in the Northeast where I am in, in the Boston area right now, we always put our hives in full sun because, you know, the weather is not quite, I mean, right now we're down to, right now I think it's 50 degrees outside. Well, if you're going to be in Georgia, the sun is, you know, yeah. we're, close, we're close to hell. So <laughs> there's only one more step and you get in hell. Now, George has been down here, and he's worked his yard in full sun, and he's been here, and it's like 20, 30 degrees cooler. So, uh -huh. you know, I would say take advice from people that's making a living at it. Yeah. A lot of people throw a lot of advice out there and put metal on their high top, you know, on their, their lids, put them in direct sun, and they just cook the heck out of the bees. So, yeah, that's what I'm worried about, because up here in, uh, in Massachusetts, we put metal on our hives, we put them in direct sun, because it's Frankly, it's snowing in June practically, so you know that's what you do. But now I'm I'm a little concerned, and obviously once I get down there, I need to spend some time with you when I have you know in some you know get some uh, schooling in. But I, I'm concerned that I'm going to use my northern practices and end up with a bunch of cooked bees. Well, you're going to have to change methods. That's definite. You know, you know what works up there is not going to work down here. I mean, you can make it work, but you lose too much time. Yeah, and exactly. Time keeps taking away. You need to start getting yourself out there to where you can start selling and making a living off of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, if you're starting out with 50 hives, you know, you should be able to split them, you know, 200 should be, you know, 90 days in the max. But I don't want to have 200 hives because if I have 200 hives, that's just money down the drain. Unless I can sell them, what's the point of having them? You can't sell them? Well, no, that's what my point is. When I hear everyone selling the, saying they don't have enough equipment, what's the point of building equipment? You should just be making splits so you can sell them, not so you can have them. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I run a lot of boxes, and a lot of my boxes are empty right now, but in the springtime, I get most of them filled again. Yeah, yeah. Now, George will tell you, uh, Dennis will tell you, you can start out with good intentions in the springtime, and you're going to find out when you think you had 100 boxes, you're going to find out you need it three times that because okay. once you start selling, one customer brings in another one. And then if you're on these chats, people watch these chats. They're going to buy local as much as they can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And Thank you. Know, whether you buy my bees or if you, you know, get anybody else's bees, make sure you got a good general stock. And if you're yeah. going to sell them, get them inspected. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm trying to weigh right now. We're trying to weigh right now. Do we try to move them down there in a refrigerated truck or I just sell them all off in the spring up here? We're, we're, we have the property already bought, but we're not going to, my son's graduating from co or high school in the spring. So we're not moving until the spring. So I'm thinking about selling them all off and then just get new stock from you in the spring. Why sell them off? Why? Because uh, what's the cost of moving them? Well, you're going to have to move furniture, right? Yeah, but you can't move bees and furniture in the same truck. The, the moving Who guys get a little testy. <laughs> Who says you can't? I mean, I've moved bees from Ohio to South Georgia. Yeah. I mean, put screen wire over them and screen them up. And okay. you're probably not going to move anyhow until, until October. Mm -hmm. It's already starting to cool down. Oh, yeah. it's, it's What cool. are you going to pull them in, a pickup truck or uh, a van? No, I have some friends actually that come down there to uh, Georgia a couple times in the spring to bring packages up in a refrigerated truck. So I'm going to, I was thinking of writing them a check and say, move them down in the refrigerated truck for me. You don't have to refrigerate them. I mean, you can put them in an open trailer. Yeah, but if it's, if it's May, it better be refrigerated or you're going to end up with a bunch of cooked May's bees. May's not bad to move bees. In, in Georgia, how hot is it down there? Well, it's, you can work in a t-shirt, I mean, but it's not hot. Right now, we stopped shipping because we're running 90 to 97 degrees. Yeah. If you ship bees and they sit in a, a mail truck, they overheat and they cook. Okay. okay. But if you're hauling them, I ship bees or I have students haul them out to Texas. And uh, Kelly comes up here and he buys 200 packages at a time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can move them from one end of the country to the other as long as you put them on the trailer right. 
Okay. If you're moving okay. hives, put you know a screen wire across the entrance, okay. pass them down. Okay. You can move. Okay. You know, at the worst you'd have to do is you have a, a good start and buy some queens to put with them. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate the advice, Don. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Over to Amir. Go ahead, Amir. Oh, hold on. You're still muted. There you go. How's everyone doing? Okay. Um, I've had fun. I bought two packages, <laughs> put one in an eight frame and one in a five frame. And the five uh, frame did better, didn't it? <laughs> five frame actually it, uh, grew quicker, mm -hmm. but the queen either absconded or I, I missed and they formed queen cells. I hadn't looked in, in there for about a, maybe seven days, came and looked on, noticed it on a Sunday, uh, which will be two Sundays ago tomorrow, made a note of it, didn't actually go back in it, and I really didn't have any more hives. I had to order some hives and, and assemble them. And when I went back uh, this past Sunday, they were hatched out. When did you put the packages in? No, the packages were already there, but they. Oh, they were. Whole, but the whole summer, they never, they never uh, got to the point where where they, you know, made queen cells. So what happened was, I had another five frame. Something just told me. I said, I'll just take two frames uh, out of there with brood on them and shake some bees and this other hive. And I just left them in there. And um, I don't know what effect that had on that hive I took them out of. But when I came back two Sundays ago, I saw like seven cells in there. Did you find the queen before you shook the bees? Uh, I, I know the queen wasn't on there when I shook the bees. They were, they were more like nurse, nurse bees. You sure? Uh, Are you positive? I, I'm sure. I, I looked, so, um, but she was a kind of a, a weird laying queen. She always laid over to like one side of the hive all the time. I don't know if that affected it, but even when I went back and looked at the cells, I still saw some, uh, uh, sh should I say, larvae in there, so to speak. Okay, uncapped root. Um, so I said, well, maybe I got some time. I don't know how long those cells were in there. But they were they were on two different frames. I had like five cells on one, on one side of one frame, and on the other frame I had one cell on either side, and they were longer, looked more like of a, a size of a peanut, uh, shell peanut. And so I took that actual frame, and put it over, with the shook bees that I shook out, and I set those in there. My intentions were, to go back and cut them out. But, like I said, I didn't have the other hives assembled at the time. So when I went back this Sunday and I looked, they had hatched out. Or, and, or either they mowed them down or whatever. The one hive that I shook the bees and I had a cell on either side of the frame, I got the queen, queen came back in that one, in that one, um, in that one uh, hive. The other one, I had like five cells on one frame and they were mowed down and uh i didn't see a queen in there right now they're queenless okay so um the eight frame uh they were laying in the top i had a double deep they were laying in the top i inverted the deeps they were bringing in nectar and uh pollen in because i got the golden rod going so i inverted the deeps haven't got a queen cell in that double eight frame yet, and they're but they're crowded and they're packed in there. So um, my intentions is to get me uh, a last little chat we had when you weren't when you weren't attending. I had a conversation with uh, Greg and Josh, and my intentions is to try to get maybe four or five breeders. I mean not breeders, but uh, made queens. queens. And I've got some five frames assembled and I want to break that eight frame down 
and put those uh, Made of Queens in with them. So my question to you is, what's the difference between a Made of Queen and a Breeder Queen? A breeder queen, you come here and look at, and you're going to look at the brood pattern. It's going to be solid. You're going to have about an inch of honey at the top, and you're mm -hmm. not going to have many missed holes. It's going to be solid. Right. Where, as a mated queen, they're in many nukes usually, or they're just been out, made it, and they're starting to lay. Maybe they're laying four days, three, four days. When we see right. eggs and larvae, we sell them. Okay. The other one is you could see it's got cat brood from one end to the other and you could see right. the pattern the production there right okay that's what you want to breed from you know okay. but you know when you just start i tell people buy a production queen it's going to do the same thing when you start selling lots of bees then start you know getting better stock all the time mm -hmm. okay all right i just was looking on there on your site and i saw that yeah. difference in the price and what do you sell to made a queen for the Made Queens, I usually sell them 35 bucks up till September. Right now, September 1st, I made so many splits. Everything I got right now is in five frame boxes to go through the winter. Mm -hmm. So if I pull a queen out of that, I might not get another sell or get a queen made in there. So I'm charging 50 bucks. And I tell people, if you can find a queen anywhere else, you know, don't think I'm taking advantage of you. But that's just life. Okay. No one's got queens right now. No, I'm understanding it. And I guess when I saw those uh, sales, my intentions was, I said, well, maybe I still got enough time to uh, get those in the individual hives and hatch out and maybe get them to come back. If you uh, got drones and they, get, they, they return, that's the problem, depending right. on where you live. You know, some right. places the dragonflies are mowing down queens faster than, you know, you can produce them. Right. Well... I, I just look at it as experience. That was my first time actually getting yeah. some sales since I've just had the packages since May and June. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a learning curve, like you say. And uh, Where about should you get the packages from? I got them from in Georgia, but I didn't get them from you. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know, everybody's got these, but, you know, it's too early that to have sales. That's what I'm trying to get at, you know. If you bought a nuke or if you bought packages from someone, was the queen made it good? Or did you bump the queen? There's a reason you got cells. Mm -hmm. And see, a new beekeeper, they have a sickness. They get tinkeritis. They got to get in there three times a day. and they don't well, I, had that if, I had that at first. I'll be quite honest with you. I, I had that at first. I was in there every three, four days looking yeah. and looking at the – yeah. All in the sense, all in the sense of you're trying to learn, yeah, and seeing from with my own eyes from what I hear yeah. from being on the chats and reading, and so, um, you know, it 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 started coming together, and then just I got to the point I said, man, I'm not even looking, and I just left them alone for a while, yeah. and came back one day, and that's what I saw. Now, no telling how long they had had those cells in there before I caught them. So but that's more than I'm, likely you you know there's possibility you know I'm just running different things by you you, you either bump the queen you roll the queen damage the queen or you got a a bad queen right and you know as far as packages you know when we sell a thousand packages mm -hmm. we sell I mean two and three hundred at a time we might out of a thousand get one percent at the most if people have problems and mm -hmm. when you start to talk to them. They put the package in and they're back in the thing checking every day, you know. And right. I try to tell them, you put a package in, leave it alone for four or five days. Right. Let the queen get a chance to lay in case you bump her. Then mm. they can replace her. Okay. But it's and a then, learning thing. Everybody wants to get in here and tinker. It's a learning I, thing. And then and then I noticed what you just told uh, Robbie earlier about the heat. Now, I, yeah. I, I know he's in Maryland. I don't, but, you know, man, we had like – three to four weeks of a heat wave where the heat index was over 100. Right. Okay, and and average temperatures were 95 to 99 degrees with the heat index going up to 110, 115 sometimes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I noticed a lot of activity back and forth, back and forth around the hives, in and out, in and out, even right now. Of course, the goldenrod is where I'm at. I, I can see the pollen on them. Um, but... Um, I see a lot of activity, and I was almost thinking, I said, well, are they preparing a swarm to myself? 
And, uh, you know, but I, I would leave them alone and just try to make room, make sure I had enough room for the queen to lay in there. So, uh, you know, that's that's long as I saw some open brood and brood in there, cat brood, I, I didn't really try to search for her. So, uh, but it, like you say, learn experience. I'm right. happy. I'm having fun. I've been stung a couple times inadvertently or, you know, that don't bother me. I don't swell up too bad. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I'm not tripping about that, you know, getting stung. I've been stung. It doesn't bother me. I, 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 I'm afraid of getting stung by humans more than I am of the bees. So, uh, you know, but, um, no, I've had fun. I've, I've got a little hive beetle issue. Not bad. Uh, well, if you don't do any kind of treatment on the high beetles, uh, just well, a I got, simple I got I got the Swifter sheets. I went and got the Swifter sheets. Yeah. And uh, I didn't want to put the Swifter sheets in there uh, raw, so to speak, just out in the open. So I did get the CD cases. And, well, they're uh, not going to get in there too good. You need to put the Swifter sheets on top of the frames. That's They yeah. tangle their legs up. That's what you do. You have to change them out. Okay. But... Uh, if I put that Swifter sheet inside that CD case, will they drive those beetles in there? And you're going to get a few in there, but you're going to get more. If you've got a bad beetle problem, putting yeah. it across the top. But a simple thing is changing the box out and just okay. put another box in its place and frame by frame, looking through, okay. and make sure no beetles. And then when you get all the frames in, you make sure the queen's in the box, look in the corners in the back of your hive. That's mm -hmm. where you're going to find a bunch. If you got 20 or 30 beetles in each corner, you've got a serious problem. Get in there with your hive tool, smash them. Well, that's what I do. I haven't seen that many. I've seen maybe three or four. Yeah, that's I'm, a normal thing. Yeah, I, I don't see them. They're not bad like that. Yeah. So I see Pat shaking her head when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I'm just, you know, like I say, I'm. I bought two packages just to really not to get too deep in an investment right away, but to really get experience and try to see how they progress and see the, you know, some of the pitfalls and the dearth situation and all that. So I'm Where having, about you say you like, live? I'm 10 minutes from when the dead skins play at where they about to get whipped by Philadelphia tomorrow. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm about 10 minutes away from the FedEx stadium, just outside of DC, but I, where I am, it's, it's really a kind of a unique situation. I'm in a little niche and I'm surrounded by wooded area, creeks, tributaries to the uh, Potomac River and things like that. So it's a rather, uh, if you didn't know, you would think he was in the country. But if you just ride three or four blocks away, you ride into DC. So well, what I was going to tell you is contact all the people around you that do pest control mm -hmm. and tell them you're willing to pick up swarms. You might end up next year getting a couple dozen, you know, swarms free just for the transportation. Go get them. Okay. Okay. I mean, freebies is freebies. Call the egg agent and get on their list. They don't charge you. They're willing to give them to someone that wants to come and get them, rescue them. I'm a pretty big man, man. I don't know if I'm going to be climbing up on no ladder now. Well, I don't climb ladders. You know, a lot yeah. of times you're hanging on a bush somewhere. People call you up. Yeah, no, I'll just, I'll just see. Uh, there's a guy here. Uh, he does a lot of the uh, bee retrieval. And yeah, you see him going up in these places doing cut cutouts up in attics and, and uh, porch. That's a hard way to get bees. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So uh, I just know I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not yeah. going to say I'm not able to do that, but I'm, I don't think I'm that experienced at this point to do that. But something outside, like you say, in the bushes or something, you know, reasonable, I think I would be able to do. But uh, I just wanted to run that by you and, uh, uh, you know, and I know we're close to the end, so I'm not trying to get any more sales at this point. But I know I need to get me some uh, Mady Queens and put in there so they can get a start in trying to build up a population. So. I, if you're going to get some queens, check on my page. Uh, there's probably people close to you up there. Got well, I talked to Greg. I talked to Greg and, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's, we're going, I'm going to work it out. I just, I just wanted to, I'm glad you started the chat up. So I got a chance to ask any questions I had before we get too far into the fall. So, you know, I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, we got time. We got three more people on deck, so we'll make them quick here. Okay, Jay, you are up next. Go ahead. Hey, Don. Hey. Glad, glad to see you in Texas. I enjoyed visiting with you, Kelly, when y'all were in. Uh, one of the main things I picked up from Kelly when we were talking, I was selling nukes and selling the equipment with the nukes, making a little extra with it. That's the wrong thing to do. I had to talk with Kelly. I sell a five-frame nuke, and I keep my equipment. <laughs> yep. Uh, one thing I noticed today when I was out in the yard, I had a couple of them in picking up some nukes, and I was doing training with one. Uh, I've got – seemed like every box we went through today had at least two or three frames just solid pollen. Is that kind of unusual for this time of year? Well, it depends on where you're at and, you know, like where I'm at. I mean, five, five, six miles down the road, they could be starving. My bees could yeah. be making, you know. Right now, my bees are only pulling pollen in, in late afternoon. Three o'clock on, they pull pollen in. Very little comes in in the morning, but every area is going to be different. Yeah. I was just surprised to see so much pollen. Uh, and I'm talking in a – what we were going through were mainly uh, – five frame doubles because uh, what I was what I was selling today was a uh, eight ten frame nukes eight frame nukes how much yeah. you sell an eight frame nuke for two and a half you about a hundred dollars low <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm doing what my market down here will handle right now no though no, that is not a, that's a cop out there I run across people that's right around here what, how much you charge you for a quart of honey? I'm only charging $8. I said, well, you could go to Walmart and get it for that. You want honey? <laughs> Mine's 25 Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm selling my comb honey for. Well, I mean, you're going to have to price what you want to live with. Yeah. Uh, I just, I went a long time during the spring and early summer. I wasn't hardly selling. I was selling a little bit of the, on my notes, but it seems like just the last, so oh, three or four weeks, they've started really picking up, and I think it's because everybody else has run out, and I've still got some. Well, are you on my page as one of my keepers? No, sir. Well, ask well, ask Kelly. You know, I mean, you got to if you want to make money, you either got to advertise or go where it's at. Yeah. Now, did Kelly tell you how many queens he's already sold this year? No, he didn't. I would have liked to talk to him about that. Yeah, he, he did real good. So, you know, that's something to think about. Yeah. But my problem is I'm, I'm going to have to quit working outside of the bee yard if I'm going to get into it a whole lot heavier than what I am right now. Well, uh, once you get on that page and then, you know, I'm going back out to Houston back in the spring. So we're doing classes out there. You know, good. you can always do classes. I mean. Yeah. I, and I'm start, I'm doing some, but I'm doing just individuals. Uh, and I'm, I do a four hour training session with them for a hundred dollars. Uh, I say an individual, I might have two or three in there, but I'm trying to keep it real small right now with them and letting them go through the hives. Yeah. Well, and the, only, working. the only problem with that is you, you've got people there that's going to kill your Queens and stuff. So you need to charge, you know, I used to teach for nothing until people said, why you teach for nothing? They've been to other places and then people teach them nothing and they're paying for it. So yeah. when they come here, you know, I start charging for it because they get in there and they kill queens on you. You know, you're you're stuck. Well, when I go out to Texas, we're doing all them people out there. We'll probably do 20 to 25 people to a class. It'll be 125 for four hours. Yeah. Hamb hamburger and a hot dog and a drink. Uh, what You're coming in the spring? Spring. In April, I think it's the second or third week in April. Okay. I haven't booked Dallas yet, but, you know, they're still talking. Okay. Uh, you going to be at Kelly's place when you do it? Yep. We'll be doing one day at Kelly's and one day at Julie's. Okay. Well, I'll try to be at one of them. Yeah. Uh, Get that hands-on. I mean, it. you know, it sounds funny. It's like you can learn everything I do on, on my YouTube videos, but when I'm standing there and showing you and explaining you, it seems to make a little difference. And it's got to, because I know the ones that are coming in that I'm doing training with, they've already done the classroom training with different ones. Yeah. And I'll spend about four hours with them out here, and they tell me how much more they learn out of it. I've got them, when I'm coming through, I tell them, I said, we don't use gloves in here. 
we use our fingers. <laughs> yeah. So that, that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I did have, you were talking about the heat earlier. Uh, one of the hives I sold today, I didn't think about it when it was loading them out. He bought three hives. He drove 45 miles from here when he got there. He had cooked the bees in one of the hives. He had his canopy on his truck. His Black. Truck. Yep. Uh, <laughs> he, he cooked them. So he's kind of. He didn't, didn't have a screen across the entrance? Uh, he did, we had it just a small opening with a screen on it, but just you got to have a full that. opening across there with a screen. That's one thing that I try to tell students here. You can make the best queen in the world, but if you can't get them across the state or across the country alive and in good condition, you ain't done nothing. The nothing. same thing with nukes. Okay. You know, there's a way to ship nukes and a way to ship queens, and there's a time when you do, and there's a time when you don't. Well, I learned a lesson today with him, and he learned a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> it gets expensive, but it gets in your pocket. You remember yeah. longer. Yeah. So, but uh, things are going. Just, okay. Like I said, I'm trying to follow what you're doing, and just I'm not at that scale by any means. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to get to where I can step out. It's probably going to be about a year before I step out, try to go full time in it. But it's we're getting there. We're building up and making things happen. Yeah. That's the main thing. Stay with it. Yeah. Uh, again, enjoyed having you in Texas and hope to see you back here and get to come to your classes. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Have you. Okay. Over to Robbie. Go ahead, Robbie. Hello. Um, would you recommend buying a queen clip to put her in until you're done inspecting the hive to prevent her from getting killed? when you put her in the hive. The reason, I'm, the reason I'm asking is because sometime in May, I don't know if I accidentally killed her or, or she flew off and never came back. I'm trying to prevent that from happening next year. You mean put a queen excluder on the bottom to keep them no, from coming out? I was thinking of buying a queen clip. A queen clip? Yeah. No, it's, it's a decapitation emotion. <laughs> I've got, I've, I've got, there's a clip you can put it inside they used to call them a ponytail clip <laughs> the, the first time they start selling them I sold more queens that first year it's a Whoa. dangerous thing oh wow okay <laughs> if you're going to do anything pick the queen up put her in your palm put her in a queen cage put a cork in it put it in the hive if that's what you're worried about Alrighty. I mean, I don't know what I did in that month. I I lost her, and I don't and I don't know why. It happens. All right. <laughs> okay. Over to Paul. Go ahead, Paul. Real quick, Don. I just wanted to thank you. But those Ross Round Super Plans, I mean, I couldn't believe. The money. Uh, <laughs> Are you laughing all the way to the bank? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting $20 a round here. And That's I'll tell good. you, those bees are building those things out quicker than I can put them in there. That's right. That's the first thing on my list this winter is to build a shitload more of those things. Yep. Well, you know, if you got supers and you pick them up wrong where that frame rest is and you bust that top piece off, I yeah. save those boxes and I cut them down and put a piece of plywood on the inside and put the raw rounds in there and I make use of them because you just cut them down to five inches. I tell you, I, I was fighting with those bees last year to draw out, you know, the, the 10 frame boxes. They just mm -hmm. wouldn't go in there for nothing. As soon as I put them on those nukes, oh, unbelievable. Well, see, I put this stuff out there. People don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, well, thanks again for okay. that. All right. And that'll be it for tonight. So thank you, Don. Thank you, everyone. And if you guys want to stick around for the after chat, we'll be chatting for a little bit afterwards as well. Okay. Get your questions ready for in two weeks, and we'll be back. Appreciate everybody showing up. Everybody have a good weekend. All right. Thanks, Don. See you in two Bye. weeks.
¿Y qué? 